a statement in Isaiah basically saying the world is falling apart. Staring back at Israel saying judgment is turned away backward and justice stands afar off. For truth is fallen in the street and equity cannot enter. What's a God to do? And he saw that there was no man and he wondered that there was no intercessor. An intercessor basically means one who fills the gap. If you have a walled city and there is a hole in the walled city, you know, just this little part that is like broken down. It's like a pile of rubble and actually you can sneak through it. You know that there's a vulnerability in a time of war? If you have an enemy, what's an enemy looking for? The gate, to try and scale the gate? They're looking for breaches or holes in the wall. They're not stupid. They're not going to waste their time going through the front door when they can go through a side little broken down breach. So the enemy, by his very nature, is constantly watching the integrity of the wall. He's looking for holes. We have massive holes in our life that give the enemy access to do with our life what he sees fit to do. We can say, that's horrible, I'm a Christian. Yeah, you're a Christian with breaches. You are not supposed to be a Christian with breaches. One of the key definitions of Christianity could be a man or a woman who, whose walls are repaired, who is made strong, why? So that they are useful to God and they're not just constantly inwardly fighting demons. They can be outward focused. God says to Israel, I will bless you so that you can become a blessing to the nations. God's pattern is to make you strong so that you're useful. There is a hedge that is supposed to be built up around your life and it very likely isn't. You need a strong man. You need someone who can step in and fight off that enemy to make you strong so that you can start focusing outward instead of on your own issues. Most of us as Christians, the church is so weak because we have literally less than 1% of our time that is able to focus outward because we are so caught up in our issues and our difficulties. Even the healthiest among us, we have issues. We have difficulties, whether it's relational, whether it's financial, whether it's health, we have issues. And there's a dying world out there. You know that 150, estimated 150,000 people died and went to hell today? Let's think about this. What did we all do about it? Did we take a step forward in beginning to do something about it? Or are we just stemming the tide from our life falling apart even more than it is? We are living on the defensive instead of the offensive. What we need is the same thing God was looking for back then. The walls are broken down. The city is in disrepair. Israel is, is without a defender. Where's the intercessor? You know who Jesus Christ was? In a nutshell, he's the intercessor. He's the man who stands in the gap. He's the strong man who came and took the full blow upon himself so that we could gather our wits spiritually and awaken and say, I'm in. Thank you for rescuing me. Literally, he took the blow. Everything that was aimed right at you to absolutely decimate your life, he took it square on. Without even a whimper, he took it for the joy that was set before him because he valued you so much. He took the blow. See, one of the things that happens with the life of Jesus, we have a tendency to make him a mousy character. We have a tendency to diminish his manly strength. We are talking about the greatest warrior of all time. In the Old Testament, the term is Lord of hosts, the captain of captains, the general of generals. And he's a general that led his troops into battle with his own life. He's the one that did it. All the rest of the army was cowering in the background. They couldn't fight this army. And he stood up single-handedly and defeated them. Intercessor, That is our King. In the same way that He stood for you then, I want you to know, He still stands for you now. When you behold the cross, and you behold the resurrected Christ, and when you behold the ascended Christ who sits at the right hand of the Father, you no longer will just remain where you are. 
you will say, God, do it all within me. For your glory, make me strong. Make me strong to give. God is looking for an intercessor, someone who will make up this breach. We need to become a body that is thinking about every single one around us, as opposed to ourselves. Coming to church going, I need to be prayed for this week. What about who can I pray for this week? Just a different mindset. It's not what this church can do for you, but what you can do for Jesus Christ and this church. Think of that attitude shift, saying, God, you made this life and you have called me for more than just to save me. You have rescued me so that I could become a rescuer. Who needs rescue? Who needs help? Who needs me to stand in the gap and take the hit? That's the attitude. It's not your skin and how you can save it. It's how you can spend it for His glory. His glory.